Overwatch 2's third competitive season is set to launch on February 7th, and today we've got some tips for climbing so you guys can hit the ground running once that new season starts. And don't forget, if you're looking for more resources like this, look no further than the Game Leap website. Over there you'll find hundreds of guides made by top level coaches for Overwatch 2 as well as plenty of other games that can help improve your playstyle and make sure that you start climbing to the ranks you deserve. Whether you're picking up a new hero and just trying to learn the basics, or trying to maximize your potential and squeeze value out of every inch of their kit, Game Leap has it all. So click the link here to get your membership started. We're going to be breaking up these tips by groupings of ranks since I know it's fairly common for players to float between different tiers as they're trying to climb. So let's start with talking about bronze and silver. My first tip here is to learn all of the basics. Overwatch is a very complicated game and if you're new to the game or haven't quite explored every inch of it, there might be a few things that catch you off guard. This of course means that you should have a good understanding of all the different heroes, objective types, and different maps in the game, even all those new ones that keep dropping, and you can use all that information to be aware of potential hero counters, to keep your eyes peeled for important cooldowns, and to note the most powerful positions across those maps. This is all fundamental information in Overwatch 2 and can be used to improve every other aspect of our gameplay. So take time when you need to to explore all these new heroes and maps just to make sure you know all their ins and outs before you meet them in competitive. My next Next tip is to play to your strengths, both as a player and for your hero. You should start by making sure you're finding heroes that match your preferred playstyle. What do you like to do in a game of Overwatch? Do you like to sit back and shoot at the enemy from a distance, or would you prefer to get things rolling by bringing the fight to them? Are you looking to jump on the first enemy who shows their head, or are you trying to out-brawl them in the front line? Whatever the case, finding a hero that matches your playstyle and plays to your strength as a player is a recipe for success. And while every hero can be played in a variety of different ways, it takes a lot of strong game knowledge and awareness to know when and how to flex to different playstyles. For now, you should focus on playing to their biggest strengths and making sure you're avoiding any of their weaknesses. My next tip here is to simply stay alive. Don't make too many risky plays that might end up with you back in the spawn room, and if you do find yourself on a constant death loop, make sure you're able to slow down your gameplay and try to acknowledge what it is that's killing you. Are you burning through all your cooldowns but trying to stay in a fight too long? Or maybe you're pushing in alone before your team's ready to group up. Whatever it is, try to take your time and adjust before you go into the next fight. My next tip is don't chase kills. Compared to many other games out there, especially other first-person shooter games, it takes a long time to finish your kills in Overwatch. Not every weapon can find a one-shot kill to the head, and many things stand in your way before you're able to finish kills. There's defensive resources like shields and healing, and there's even abilities that prevent death altogether. If it takes you more than two or three seconds to finish your target, you might want to take a step back and look around you. Make sure you're not accidentally walking into a crowd of enemies or straying too far from your teammates. All it takes is a little split second where you ask yourself whether or not it's worth it to use that final cooldown or push around that next corner or whether or not that's going to get you punished. My next tip is to remove any physical barriers that might be hindering your success. It'll be difficult to climb if your ping is always spiking or if your frames keep dropping during a teamfight. While not possible for everyone, some changes to your network or some adjustments to in-game settings might help boost your performance. And make sure other things like the height of your desk or chair or the space on your desk for your mouse and mouse pad aren't making you uncomfortable. Top level players are always checking up on these things to make sure there's nothing holding them back from playing consistently. Alright, moving on to gold and platinum, and my first tip here will be to focus on specific heroes. Many heroes in Overwatch 2 have somewhat overlapping strengths and skill sets, and it's not really hard to swap between them. For example, hitscan characters like Cassidy and Ash. But other characters are different entirely. Look at a DPS like Symmetra compared to one like Genji. Having a broad hero pool can make you somewhat of a jack of all trades, but more likely will make you a master of none. If you play a different hero every time you load into a new map, then you're not going to be able to build the different skills that each hero requires, and that means your overall skill level as a player will stagnate or maybe even regress. I'm not saying you should one-trick a single hero, but make sure you've got a couple of go-to picks that you feel the most comfortable on for your given role, and try not to swap off of them unless you really need to. And my next tip is going to be to try out different roles. This doesn't mean that you need to focus on climbing with every single role with all of tank, DPS, and support. There's so many different skill sets there, you'll probably want to focus on one as your main role, but in order to grow, it's important to learn from different perspectives. Try out a few heroes on a role that you're not used to in a couple of unranked games, and I promise that you'll learn something. There's a very common example of this that I see posted online all the time, which is when tank players decide to try out support just to see how it goes. When put in that new perspective, they quickly learn how an over-aggressive tank actually gets them punished in the backline when they can't keep up, and maybe when they go back to their main role, they'll slow things down a little bit and be more conscious of their supports. 
Moving on, my next tip is to set goals. Now, since you're watching this video, we can assume that you already have the long-term goal of generally improving as a player and climbing through the ranks, but that doesn't get us very far when trying to focus on specifics for our gameplay. Most of your specific goals like this should be set on softer skills like decision making and fight planning rather than hard skills like your mechanics. You're not going to suddenly become a god level aimer in the middle of a game, but you can change the way you approach a fight. Videos like this one are a great resource for finding some of those areas that you might not have been paying attention to and setting those as goals. We can even use some examples from this video that we've already talked about. Maybe you're running into a fight too quickly without taking note of where your teammates are. Or maybe you're chasing down a kill for too long and burning through all your resources before you even know it. Whatever the problem is, set goals around it and remind yourself about those goals every chance you get. Every time you die and are waiting to respawn, every time you're swapping sides on a map, or even between games altogether. My next tip is to be patient and to give yourself time to improve. Change doesn't happen overnight. In order to improve on these goals that you're setting, you'll need to spend enough time working on them. This could take days or even weeks to see improvement. And on top of that, it just takes a lot of playtime in general to actually see your improvement. Even if you are playing above your skill level currently, then it takes time to play enough games and get enough wins stacked up so that your rank starts going up and you start challenging yourself with new opponents. All that really just to say, it takes time. Trust the process. My next tip is to play whatever you find the easiest success with. And this all comes down to, once again, your strengths as a player. If you've got really strong mechanics, you should play heroes that can flex those mechanics and give you a good chance to carry a game. If instead you're a savant at the game and have impeccable game knowledge and prediction skills, then maybe you'll play characters with more important cooldowns or ultimates to abuse those situations. At this level of play, it's not about what heroes are considered the strongest or what compositions work best together, but what you can get done as a player. The meta doesn't matter, you do. Even if your given hero choice might be countered on paper by what the enemy is running, if you're still making it work, it's probably because you're just better than they are as a player and you should push that to its limit to find success. All right, let's move on to diamond and master level players. And my first tip here will be to adapt to your faults. Try to break down any situations in which you're not finding the value you usually do, or you're getting punished by enemies, or of course just when you're getting sent back to the spawn room. What's almost certainly happening in these situations is that you don't have critical information that you're getting outplayed by. There could be an additional enemy or sightline that you weren't accounting for, or a cooldown or ultimate that catches you off guard. Whatever it is, make sure that you take note of it and work that into your game plans the next time you're getting aggressive. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, and you might want to spend some time in the replay viewer figuring out exactly what happened. My next tip here will be to grind out your mechanics, or your aiming ability in other words. Both decision making and mechanics play off of each other very heavily in a game like Overwatch, and both are required to climb. Up until this point, you probably could have made up for a lack of strong mechanics with just hero choice or strong game knowledge, but now is where it really starts to matter. Videos like this one can help patch some holes in your game knowledge or decision making skills, but mechanics are really up to you. Try to spend some time outside of a competitive setting working on your mechanics and pinpointing any weak areas that might need focus. There are a ton of resources out there to help you get started, but some of my favorites are actually just in-game itself. Try out Workshop Game Codes KAVE5 or VAXTA for some aim training games. Playing around in these custom games allows you to forget all the stress that comes with being in a competitive setting and instead focus solely on your mechanics. And very much related, my next tip is to warm up your mechanics. Consistency is everything in Overwatch 2, so warm up those fingers and shake off all that bad aim before you go into your first comp game. You can do this in some of those custom game codes we mentioned, or even just in an unranked queue, just to make sure you're able to get in-game and get a feel for things before you queue up to comp. I'm not suggesting you spend hours doing this, maybe just 10 or 15 minutes before your first game every play session, but I promise that taking the time to do this is much better than finding out mid-game that your aim isn't up to par. Moving on, my next tip is to group up. And I don't mean in-game, even though that is also important. What I mean here is to find teammates with similar mindsets who are focused on improvement and climbing and queue up together with them. Having even just one solid teammate that you know you can depend on makes a huge difference in a game like Overwatch. And working together over an extended period of time can allow you to learn from each other and potentially build synergy that plays to each other's strengths. Just keep in mind that because of the way the matchmaking system works, the more people you queue with, the more people that will be grouped up on the enemy team as well. So if you're looking for more than just a duo partner, you better make sure you've got some synergy because you'll likely be going up against coordinated teams. Next tip is to punish mistakes quickly. 
we've been talking a lot about improving from our own mistakes, but now it's time to turn our attention to the enemy who are making just as many if not more than we are. Even while making a proactive play for ourselves, we should still be looking for opportunities to punish over-aggressive or over-committed members of the enemy team. And to make this easy, there are three key areas that you should be looking for. First one being to punish an enemy who's out of position. This can mean simply just on the low ground when you've got the high ground above them or when they're completely isolated away from their team. Second is to punish an enemy who's out of resources, whether that's after they've used important cooldowns, after their shields are broken, or maybe even after you've outlasted their ultimates. With less of these tools available to them, it'll be much easier to outplay them. And third, you want to punish an enemy's lack of focus, and generally that means a lack of focus on you specifically. This can mean waiting for another member of your team to take all of their focus fire before you go in and finish the kill, or you can also punish a whole team's worth of focus if they're trying to get to an objective or an important location on the map, and you can cut them off from that goal. Moving on to our next category for Grand Master Players and Beyond. And our first tip here is to manipulate the objective. You can use the fact that your team controls the objective or the fact that you've got more objective progress than they do as an advantage going into the next fight. Look to force enemies into taking multiple fights before they retake an objective by holding off of the objective itself. But if you start losing the point winning fight, make sure you stall out the objective progress by dying on point and even staggering your deaths with other teammates. All of these efforts can put you in a situation where you only need to win one more fight when the Koth point is at 99% or when you're just one fight away from full capping on a payload map. When in a position like that, you can simply stack up major ultimates and only take a perfect fight instead of trying to take as many fights as possible. My next tip here is to control as many outside factors as possible. We've already talked about how important consistency is in a game like Overwatch, and we've also talked about removing any physical barriers that are preventing you from reaching that consistency, but now we can think even a little bit deeper. You can start considering things like how much sleep you've had the night before your play session, or what your eating habits are like. Are you eating too close or not close enough to when you start gaming? And what about caffeine? When's the last time you had a cup of coffee or an energy drink? It might not seem like much right now, but when you're trying to push to the top levels of the leaderboard, these small things can make all the difference in your play. Alright, my next tip here is to know your breakpoints. And breakpoint just meaning how much damage exactly is required to get a kill in any given situation. You probably already know that Tracer can get one shot headshot by a scoped in Ash or by Maze Icicle, but are we thinking about things like where the enemy supports are and whether or not they have LOS to our target? What about damage amplification from of course things like Mercy's Beams and Yada's Orb or even Baptiste's Ultimate? All of these things will drastically alter the outcome of a teamfight and you need to make sure you're respecting all the different variables when whenever you're trying to go in for a kill. If even one of these things catches you off guard, you might not be able to finish your target or you might get punished yourself. My next tip here is to know when to get carried. And it's probably not what you want to hear, I know what you're thinking, I want to be the carry. But simply put, that's not always possible. Don't let your ego get in the way if you queued up with a remarkable teammate who is performing just as well or, god forbid, even a little bit better than you are and let them take the lead in situations where it benefits them. And even if you are the best player in the lobby, there's still going to be situations where you shouldn't be thinking of yourself as the strongest carry. A great example would be if you don't have your ultimate available, but a teammate does. You should be playing for them to find success with that ultimate instead of trying to make things work for yourself at every turn. And my next tip is to make sure you don't forget to enjoy the game. This applies to every player, but of course if you've pushed all the way to GM or above, you've probably sunk a good amount of time into the game. All that motivation to grind out and climb up the leaderboard likely started with a strong passion or love for Overwatch itself. It's a fantastic game, I'm right there with you. But if we lose sight of what really matters, having fun in the game and instead focus too much on all the little things we've been using to grow and climb up the leaderboard, we can stress ourselves out, the game all of a sudden won't be fun anymore, and we'll quickly lose that motivation. Don't let this happen to you. Unless you're getting paid to play this game professionally, you shouldn't be treating it like a job. So if you ever find yourself getting too stressed out or just getting lost in the grind, try to disconnect for a little bit. Go take a walk, step outside, maybe take a day off the game, or if you are still keen to play, maybe queue up a few unranked or even just play with a couple friends to remind yourself how fun this game can be. Wherever you might find yourself on the leaderboard, you're probably trying to get higher, so I hope the tips in this video will help you do just that. And if you're looking for even more advice, you can go to GameLeap.com. Over there you'll find hundreds of Overwatch 2 guides as well as plenty of other guides for other games made by top level coaches. These guides are super in depth, way more than anything you'll find on YouTube. So wherever you find yourself on the ladder, I'm sure you'll be able to learn something. So if you're looking for a way to kickstart your improvement, click this link to get your membership started.